I got a fat man scoop, Crooklyn clan, fat man scoop, Crooklyn clan, Crooklyn clan, Crooklyn clan. I got money for bills, but got no money for pay. Looking at me sideways will get you gay. <laughs> oh, is that actually it? Uh, no, no. Oh, oh, no, oh, no. oh that was I, just that was I just venom. Off. That was actually just venom. I was yeah, I was, I was spitting. Shit. I spat hard then. Holy man. shit. Mm-hmm. Son. Fresh as a daisy, baby. You recognize that voice, ladies and gents. That there is uh, Kyle Steven. Hey, guys. Back for uh, round three. Round three, baby. Call it popular demand. Call it what you will. <laughs> but uh, the boys are away, so we've got a uh, coming on for his first crack today. To my left is uh, F- Mr. Uh, Filthy Rich. Phil, what up, man? Filthy. How are you? Good, brother. Thanks for coming on. Phil's the, uh, got him on as the reliable fucking tech guy amongst the group. Uh, May have listened to the uh, 13 minute edition last week and uh, still cuts me to the core that we missed that grand slam. But, um, <laughs> that was a money 13 minutes. Though. Fingers crossed. We're going in. Uh, we're going in somewhat confident this week with uh, with you here. So, well, he's already just done the part already, man. He's just set this up. We couldn't get a thing going, That's it. and Filthy Rich just did, came up and set it up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Straight fire. Uh, leading in off the uh, off the weekend. UFC 205. It was uh, it was a humdinger. It man. was it was hy- hyped up as much as a card can get. The debut at Madison Square Garden and uh, didn't they do oh, it? Oh, in terms of the card delivering, it was just a fantastic <laughs> afternoon of fights, all the way from the fight past prelims, all the way through to the main event. And uh, Conor McGregor, simultaneous two world champion. He oh my Un- god, unbelievable, <laughs> unbelievable. Do you see it, Phil? Oh, I thought I thought that fight was one of his best, actually. Like oh. just just the just how he was looking at Eddie, like it didn't. It, it was like he wasn't even there fighting. It, it was, was a, just a it was a straight just master. Him apart. Like, Absolutely, it was a straight <laughs> masterclass. You c- couldn't have said it better. It was. Uh, he looked just so confident and just so early. I mean, Eddie didn't seem to fight to his game plan. I uh, just stood in front of him and tried to get into a boxing match. But Connor was just his timing. His, it was his like, left hand. Did it. you see on him? He was saying that he actually trained with his right hand behind his back mm. because it was so swollen. So he, that's yeah. why he was doing that during the fight. And I'm going to be the first to admit, I have never been on the Connor hype train. I didn't. I I thought he was just a flash mm. in the pan, you know, but. Even those last two fights against Diaz, but what got it for me, and now I am one of the a big oh. fan, is just schooling another champion like mm. that. No one has ever beat up Eddie Alvarez. <laughs> oh, Eddie is a um, drag him out, run him out, yeah, five round fucking grinder, and he just made it, he just put him away with, like, with his hand. Just and the same the same shot every time, and did the combination he finished with him. It was just like he was on another level. He was. It was an absolute master, the accuracy. Master, yeah, it was a masterclass. As he was falling away, he was still landing those big shots, and that's what did the that's what did it. And just to see that and how the pace that he was keeping as well, man, was just incredible. And he had Eddie all over that. You know, I wanted to see him get taken down. I wanted him to see him fight like and go through some adversity and still win, but. Holy shit! Like, didn't he just dominate? And then when Eddie did go for a hit, like he just he didn't get it. He's like, "Is that all you got?" It oh, was. Good it night. was. It uh, reeked of an Anderson Silva in his prime performance yeah. for me. It really did. Mm. He just toyed with Eddie. Eddie had never had anything for him. Granted, I think in the, some of the first exchanges where he got dropped, he was just on his ass before he even knew it. He yeah. just went straight he to his back. He was like, after he, that first drop. The rest of the fight, he just looked stunned pretty much. That's right. Know? And he's, that, uh, was a, that was his edge gone. He didn't really like time any of his shots well no. for takedowns because he was probably rocked. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? He'd already been dropped, so that would take it out of you. Well, and you could just see it every time he even looked like he just grazed his chin with his left. He was down, you know, and however many times that happened, that's going to play a big toll. On your mental state, your confidence. You've just been rocked about six times. <laughs> You're going down. Your unbelievable performance and his efforts on the mic afterwards. Just as <laughs> just as good as well, man. He does not give a fuck. He was going to kill someone if yeah. they didn't get that second Definitely. belt, man. But it was on. Uh, apparently, it was on Connor to bring his uh, his one forty five pound belt. Uh, he, he should have had it there, cage side sort of thing. So what they did, he sprinted backstage, and Tyron Woodley was a good enough guy to give him his belt that he had just won. He goes, look, just oh, really? take, take it out there for the show. Let him have his moment. Like this History, this is, history is being made here. Take my 170 belt. Like, th- Isn't that good go. from T-Wood? Yeah, though. absolutely. Wow. That, that's good sport. And McGregor deserved that moment. 
Oh, he's, he's the biggest star we've ever seen in MMA now at this point, and I'm, at this stage, I think he'd have to be called the greatest of all time. Yeah. Just for what he's done. And, Just, I, and I'm like you, Kyle. I, it took me a long time to come around to this motherfucker. It really did. I, was, I love all the theatrics and that sort of stuff, so I tune into everything that he does. But I was had questions about his skill set. For so long, I said that Frankie Edgar would be the hardest fight for him that he mm. could possibly have. Oh, and didn't he? He would sleep Frankie. Yeah. I was, and I hate to say it, I'm Frankie yeah. Edgar to the core, but Connor would sleep him early. Yeah. After seeing what he did to Alvarez and just what he's done in the past, and he's getting better. Even himself said that he's he's coming to his peak. He doesn't even think he's at his peak yet. You know, he's 28, um, and just the way he was talking just sounded like I I now go. I believe you. you know? Yeah. Like I, when he's talking, I'm listening. As do I. And because I just didn't, and maybe that's why I didn't get into him so much at start because he was talking a lot of crap. Mm. And I'm just like, oh, fuck off, man. Like, yep. I'm not into the bun. I'm, I, I like the guys that just, you know, keep it classy. But I'm on this train now, yeah. man. And I love all that trash talk. Yeah. That's it. And the thing is, we may not see him again anytime soon mm. because he's got the, uh, the bargaining power now to call the shots. And, after we'll touch on his fight earlier, uh, a little bit later, but he's got a guy named Khabib Nurmagomedov waiting oh, in the wings for him. So it, that's that's a tough fight. But anyway, we'll go. We'll press forward down the card. Yeah, yeah. Tyron Woodley versus we touched on him being a good guy with the belt, and it managed to win a majority draw with two judges scoring forty-seven all against Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. Mm-hmm. He won on, uh, Woodley won on one of the cards, forty-eight forty-seven. So he was able to get. Uh, it re- retain his belt. Yeah, yeah. The fight was still a draw. There was a bit yeah. of a botched thing there at the end with Buffer, where it was a little bit fucking and even, hard, hard to gauge what was going on. And I think at one point, Tyron looked like he was panicked that he might he may have lost the fight. Well, even if it was like if on the majority draw, because like he's still the champion. He didn't. You got to beat the champion. You know, mm. like and it. He oh, he didn't win on my cards though. He, no, I had Wonder Boy winning yeah. winning that fight as well. Like, but. Uh, Wonder Boy for me, uh, his stock went up massive in, in my books. Everyone knows what what sort of gun elite striker he is, and and he was fucking landed some real classy combinations and stuff on the weekend. But he showed heart on Getting the weekend. In. Was that round two or round Four. three? Oh man, where he was... almost got put away. One, uh, Tyron Woodley hit him with the hardest right hand of the fight. It was the biggest punch of the fight. Dropped, uh, managed to drop Wonder Boy. Ends up getting to the ground and gets him in a guillotine from it's from so the bottom deep as well. And it, oh. It, Tyrant's a brown belt. So everyone think, talks about wrestling credentials yeah. and stuff, but he's in brown belt and jiu-jitsu. Can you imagine the squeeze on that oh. motherfucker? Yeah, you I can just, see the I tension. Just, I just saw him like drawing in Woodley the whole time and just, just fucking right at the end there was just like using his core strength mainly like that and and um, just just kind of wouldn't wouldn't give Woodley a chance to use his reach on him or anything once yeah. he had him there. But like the first part, I just saw him kind of like uh, tiring him out a little bit like that so he couldn't get struck with any surprise like long long punches and then yeah once he had Woodley close to him just fucking wouldn't let him go with all those like close range kind of like fucking jabs on the face and shit and that that last one too oh man and, and he did he dominated they must have given him a 10-8 it must have been that round where he just got smoked was a 10-8 you know, close, but at the same time, Wonder Boy finished the round on top, landing oh, punches to the face. Yeah, he, that, that was a that was a, the fight. I think that was given fight of the night. The heart. It certainly he fucking deserved him, to be. Yeah, I think they're going to make a, a rematch for that, and, and I can understand that. Mm. But dead said, I, I would like to see Conor McGregor go. Hey, hey T Wood, oh, you, you know, you gave me that belt in the back. G- give us a shot at that one. Really? Because the same thing again. It's the same principle as Nate Diaz when he yep. lost. He went up. Massively, you know oh, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So he doesn't lose any street cred if he goes there. It's just people like fuck. He's got balls. Yeah, he's and he would make. Money. He could be the first to it even. Like, he's got the first to get two at the same time, and he's going to be the first person to try three. I, you wow. may not ever see that ever ever again in this sport. That's crazy to contest man. for three. And just after what he did on the weekend, and I want to like I'd love to see it, but I just I want to see him fight someone else. You know, I, yeah. like I, I'm a I'm a I think he should fight. Khabib, man. Yep. I want to see. I want to see if he can get taken down and really grapple. Mm. You know, I want. I want to see Khabib, man. He's like he's a python. Khabib in his fight with Michael Johnson on the weekend. Khabib Nurmagomedov, the Russian eagle for the the casual fans, is a from Dagestan, Russia. 
and is just one of the well, no, basically is the most elite grappler in mm. MMA at the moment. I dare say he, he's so effective with his grappling, and he he got the win over Michael Johnson on on the weekend. He finished him in the third round, but for the first two minutes, he got he, he, he MJ got landed up. plenty. Yeah, he took it, and that makes you wonder with McGregor but, could, in the in McGregor's timing, can he take those shots? But I still, yeah, I'm, I'm on board. The Khabib train. I'm Team McGregor, but I still maintain Khabib nowadays is probably the hardest fight that Connor can have right now. Definitely, that's within reason as well. I, I don't, like. I just don't want to see uh, the going up to fight T Wood. You know, mm. like especially now or the next fight. Like I want to see him get a couple of these. Like especially at this weight, a lot more, and maybe defend his title. And I think that's what I think that's what will happen. Like I think it's a bit of a farce yeah. if they just jump up as well. For sure. Imagine if Connor goes up, takes out T Wood, and then fights the oh, winner of God. Yoel Romero, Michael Bisping. <laughs> oh man! Yoel Romero's KO of Chris Weidman in Weidman's own backyard. That flying knee, Phil. That mm. knee, oh, that is a thirty-nine-year-old man in there with a physique like someone out of a fucking X-Men movie. I couldn't stop laughing, though, when he did that. Hey, it's like just, there was so much blood everywhere. Oh, oh it, 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 split, it just split him straight away, didn't and it? Weidman, he was stuck pig spec. Weidman, was, he was out of the fight straight away once it happened. You, you know when you get really hit with a shot. Yeah, and I've been hit the, Yeah, and you just go down and you totally forget that you're in a fight and he's just in safety mode grabbing his head and it was... It was bad. Like it was bleeding profusely, and I'm still waiting for your old Romero. It's a sad report, man. Did you see how ripped he was? Oh, he's coming off a, a failed drug test, but he went down the uh, dick pill, oh. the, the tainted dick pill path. Oh, so, but like, any dude that pisses hot in MMA nowadays goes, "Oh, I had a Viagra." Oh, right. You know what I mean? There's like chem- a certain like uh, chemical component in that that is in Viagra is in a hell of a lot of PhDs, really? uh, oh. PEDs. It seems because okay, yeah, they yeah. all got John Jones dick pill, Anderson tainted dick pill, like just a lot of dick pills. Some dodgy what are they, shit. What, is it because they just can't get it up anymore? Man? No, it's <laughs> because they want to uh, not just come out and say oh, I was on HDA. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean, it's more credibility. Like, How oh, funny. Hey, I just, just want to get get a real hard erection. Like, oh, so like, what, what's with these fighters? They can't get it up. Yeah, like, maybe. Yeah. Like, imagine how tired you'd be after training and shit. Oh though. shit! Probably the last thing you're thinking about is. Fucking balls are big as, yeah. as a basketball. Yeah, man. You imagine Yoel's piece. <laughs> Yoel, Yo-El. Yo-El. that then I'm taking HDH. Oh, yeah. yeah, you better believe Yoel went back to uh, went out in Ooh. New York that night and let his hair down. And Khabib and, and yeah, everyone and, else. And by letting his hair down, I mean destroyed <laughs> something plenty. Fucking twenty year old plenty. <laughs> went into New and York, then and then went back out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, Joanna, uh, well, Carolina. That, that that was a tough fight. I d- no way in hell did I see that going five rounds. So full credit to Carolina and Carolina probably landed the biggest shot of the fight as well. She hurt Joanna yeah, um, in the fourth round, I think. Yeah, really, really, really hurt her at one point. And I was like, I thought it might have been the ultimate underdog story there, but wasn't I'm hoping. Too, yeah, yeah it was Joanna close. in such good condition that her, her chin is obviously really, really strong. She took the shots and managed to recover and. Ended up winning a uh, pretty com- comprehensive decision there in the end. So I think she only lost the one round. Um, yeah. She looked clinical Definitely. again, and I think it was just she just, you know, when you're in a fight for twenty odd minutes, at least the other person's probably going to get you at one point, you know, mm. pretty well. And but after that, she just didn't stop her at all, and, and she just kept going forward and forward and forward. And man, she beat the shit out of her. <laughs> Class act. I wonder the significant strikes was ridiculous. Jeremy Stevens, Frankie Edgar. Whoa. That was the last fight on the prelim. So you, you'd already had a fight that was basically a deserved main card mm. on any other sort of like Fox or Fight Night. Definitely. FS1 sort of spec card. Yep. Just a uh, tough fucking fight. Oh, though. man. Jeremy Stevens. He's like, he came to bang. He hurt Frankie at one yeah, point, but a, a three-round fight for Frankie Edgar is... Uh, he just warmed up. He, he can just go for days at that weight. Yeah. He, he was good enough to get it done. A fun fight. No one really loses too much credibility there. And it's just a bit of an awkward one for Frankie because where does he go now? I mean, connor has got the, the yeah. belt at 45. Yeah. He's not even in the conversation for a fight with him for mine. Because I think um, Frankie wouldn't last a round. No way. Not after what they've seen. Seriously, at, at 145 when Frankie would be cutting a, a little bit of weight to get down there, not a heap. But, yeah. And I always said Frankie would be the toughest fight for him, like I said. But I think these days, Connor, 
like and just we'll put, just put him, him we'll just sleep him early. Too, hits way too hard at that weight. At that weight, and with that right uh, left hand, he just that's what he is, oh, and that's why he came up so strong, man. Just jo- dropping bombs. Jose Aldo is is the interim champ. Mm-hmm. He's talking about retiring and all sorts of shit at the moment. His head doesn't seem to be switched on towards fighting by any stretch. So and and Frankie's that? already lost to him twice. Yeah. So you can't really make that again. Like, what does the third one achieve? So Frankie's in a bit of limbo at the moment, and he's not getting any younger. No, so, no, no. And in my got... opinion, uh, Frankie lost, you know, in that mm. fight with um, Jose, man. That last one they fought. Oh, it yeah. Was, and and it, it was comprehensive. Oh, yeah. And you could just tell. he like, That fight, just it wouldn't happen. There's so many other more. So it's like, where does that weight class go now, you know? Exactly. Yeah, it's one of those things. But... Um, Tough, tough times ahead for Frankie, but not as tough as the uh, Australian cricket team, Kyle. <laughs> we might as well touch on that while we're here. On a, uh, for the non-fucking cricket fans, Australia is and has always been a pretty proud cricketing nation. Lost five test matches in a row now, which is mm. sort of unheard of out here and getting flogged in games at home. But I'm not here to fucking break down the full analytics of the uh, fast bowlers and the batsmen and that sort of shit. But there's a guy that they're looking at bringing back in that uh, our guest here, Kyle Stephen, might uh, may have had a couple of brief encounters with <laughs> before. Is that uh, right? Uh, yeah, let, let me guess. It's um, Moses Enriquez. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> yes. Oh, Got it in one. Wow, that does take me back. Big Mosses. <laughs> that actually takes me back to 2007, 2008. Oh, shit. There we no go. No shit, yeah. So, it's only Wednesday, but we're going throwback Thursday. Oh, that's, wow. that's when everyone will be listening, so... <laughs> I don't hell. want to name drop, but this is this is worth it. Uh, when when I was dating uh, my old girlfriend, I was living in Sydney, and it, it it wasn't a it wasn't looking good. Like I just moved down there. I just had a knee operation, so I couldn't leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. I was. I couldn't get a job, and like it, it was just going nowhere. And we, and the relationship wasn't good. It stopped really. banging. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, or- yeah. For I don't think like we even bang when I got there. It was just and at like, that age you're done. Like, oh, you're done, bro. Done. And uh, and and we were just we sort of fought this out for maybe three weeks, and it was just like before we even and this is during it. Like the event happened during it while well, we were just going out for one of um, my miso's best friends. Uh, tw- um, so her partner, his twenty uh, first or nineteenth something birthday. And it's in the middle of the cross, right? King's Cross, Sydney. And I'm wearing, oh. I'm wearing the fucking gayest pink tie shirt, <laughs> button up thing you've ever seen. And it was, and I thought I was skinny. Top shit. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah. Some leather. Yeah. As well. I was maybe a necklace. I don't know. Oh, I was allegedly. Really, yeah. <laughs> I was, I was, I felt like I was looking pretty fly, but oh man, and. Like we were going through this really hard time, and we were just not a good couple to be around. Let alone feeling like going out to the cross and fucking partying. Yeah, oh. I've never been out into the cross either, and I just didn't know what to expect. So I've just worn my best clothes, yeah. my best Brisbane clothes, <laughs> <laughs> feeling euphoric as fuck. Yeah, so euphoric. <laughs> And we get down to this club, it's downstairs and it's just a little room, it's really intimate and it's like private DJ and just a, there's a lot of big tall guys and that look really sporty and a couple of real honeys on the side piece as well. And I'm like, who the fuck yeah. party is this and what am I doing here? Mm. I looked inferior, like these are, all these guys are at least like six foot. And they're, they're sporty. You know they look – and they look good in shirts and shit. All right? So – and and we, I was just got there and I just – it was free piss. So I just started smashing, smashing the sugarcane champagne. Oh, really? Oh, man. And it was it was nonstop. So what I was doing, I was just getting drunk and the drunker I got, the, I got, the more angry I got. <laughs> <laughs> And this is in a party where there's heaps of dudes and I, I just I didn't try to hide it at all. And Wait, was was just, there any conversation with like Enriquez and the cricket boys or was it sort of just that, war, that was flat, com- war No, that flat. was coming. That was oh, coming. Right. Yeah, and um, my miso just went and started talking to this big piece and I was just like, oh, 
fuck off, man. I started to do this, the whole, like, no, nah, this is my shit kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, and I'm like, at, that, no. at that age too, though, where oh, you're, no, like, fucking much, ignorant though. to it. So, yeah. I, I, had, I was full of Dutch courage, man. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a couple of hours Fus- in. Sugar cane champagne. Oh, mate, I was flying. <laughs> <laughs> And then I just sort of, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do this, got over in there and I was sort of had like had a big thing. I I felt pretty tough and I'm like, mate, what the fuck? Like, can you just back off talking on your soul and all this stuff? And he's, (laughs) and he started to have a jig at me too. And I'm like, oh no, fuck you, mate. And it's fuck, fuck, fuck. And then before you know it, this guy comes over and it's the guys whose party it is. And he's like, mate, guys, all right, sorry, sorry. And I'm like, no, you fucking mate, it's doing, and he's like, and this, the birthday boy is just apologising to me profusely. He's like, oh, man, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. And telling his mate. And I was like, oh, fuck this. And, dude, I didn't know. I really at the time who this guy was. He was just a young bull. And it, it, we caused a bit of a scene. And I've just left the place, gone home in the middle of, in the, middle of the cross. I'm like, well, get me out of here. And little did I know the the birthday boy was Moses Enriquez <laughs> and all the boys at the party were all these New the South Wales. Wales. <laughs> the blues. <laughs> like the blues. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't remember. And I remember, oh, well, seeing it on TV and I'm like, oh. So the, you left the miso there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I just, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mate. And I think that was it. Yeah. Like, the writing was well and truly on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> it took it took Moses to really point us in the right direction and got rid of it. And I was just, oh man. And I, I was watching a game or of uh, or just even the news, and he's flashed up on the screen, and I'm like, oh. and I, I took a photo or a screenshot or something, and I sent it straight to Maddie. I'm like. I just told, and I told him the story I just told you there, man. And it's just some of the, I'm like, oh, you wouldn't believe who I have fucking spit at. <laughs> Moses the big dog. The mate. And yeah. what, what I'm coming to is I'd really like to patch that up with Moses too. So if we could just organise this, like. <laughs> I just, uh, t- eight years on, man, I just uh, <laughs> want to apologise for breaking you 21st, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm really sorry, and I'd like to, uh, yeah, make amends. So if you come back into the team, uh, if there's any way we can get some like tickets or anything too, that would be, yeah, that'd or be even, pretty sweet. Or even come on the podcast. You yeah, know, we'd, we'd love to have you on here. <laughs> <laughs> Give you some merch. Shout, shout out to Enriquez. <laughs> I wonder who it was that was being the dickhead to you. Oh man, who knows? Fucking Brett Lee, allegedly. Oh, allegedly. Yeah, Warner wasn't there. Yeah, <laughs> no, man. no, he wouldn't no. have been. It wouldn't have been. No, shit. But it, Oh, he was tall and blind, so oh. let's, let's, look at it. let's <laughs> oh, find that team. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it right there, but anyone wants to send us through a team photo of the 2008, <laughs> we're happy to peruse it for you, you fucking sons of bitches. <laughs> and we'll, and we'll, we'll, we'll do a showdown. With that, we're just going to take a quick little uh, commercial break here, and uh, we'll be right back with you in a sec. <laughs> oh, shit, we're back. Just talking about Kyle on the uh, brief interlude there, Phil, uh, <laughs> Filthy Rich fucking threw it back to a bit of... Mm-hmm. Um, Caesars, back to an old club in Brisbane. Oh, that mate, was an that old school. The uh, around the valley picks you up. Just purely a good time. Oh, it's a dance club. And we're laughing about the nostalgia of the joint. And uh, Kyle, my have heard his other episode was a dancer. And he's like, he used to dance at that club. I did. I did. They had heaps of photos. <laughs> and they took off like, uh, what's that, the, where they dance on the bar? Coyote Ugly. Coyote Ugly. They took off that and like we'd always dance on the bar and they'd, we'd come out and tap dance and I'm not even 18 of this oh. And you know what? I couldn't tap to save my life. Like I was just making it up but I was so jumped up on Red Bull and no one was even watching us. We danced seven days a week. They tried to be the super club that was open seven days a week. So we would be dancing <laughs> midnight on a Monday night Oh, whoa. to just like... Two or three people with just like really hard fucking beats, man. <laughs> <laughs> and then we oh, just. What sort of coin are we talking about? Oh, man. Oh, enough for me to want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I think we got we got paid pretty well um, and for what we did, but sometimes we did it and it was packed out. Like it was like, <coughs> the room and that was pretty cool. And. But, like, only the few people there could see us. We were on pretty much ground level. No one could see us, man. <laughs> we would just and we would just go out in the back and wait for our next show and we'd dance again and dance again and then I'd fucking drive home. Man. Ever dance in a cage? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, 
That's a yeah, had, dirty. Yeah, it was uh, at Homer at the club. Yeah, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> That was the club, man. That family, baby. <laughs> oh, no, the club. Yeah, some Saturday nights. I was, and then I got paid. I got paid fifty dollars an hour to do some of that stuff. Shit, and man. so to an At 18, that, 19 yeah. year old. So I was just in two thousand and six. Yeah, yeah, and I and I was loving it. Get it, get paid and go out at the same time. Mm. So I'd, and you get free piss as well. And so you just off. Chops, man. Yeah. You were so drunk. Yeah, I bet. You know, just in this cage. Just yeah, just yeah. In, 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 the, in my own little naughty even, cage. I even <laughs> dance it on the Saturday night at, at Fluffy, which is the gay night. Ooh. And I invited, like, I don't know what was going on, but I did it with a mate of mine and um, we got our mums to come along and mum was there dancing. And I'm on the podium at this gay club dancing and like hugging <laughs> mum. <laughs> Full family affair. Oh man! Was, and I was just like, Mum's like, I'm so proud of you, and I'm just like, <laughs> like wow. drunk. Yeah, like, I was absolutely just, slaughtered. I was slaughtered, and it was just uh, everyone fucking around her on <laughs> oh, all sorts e- of shit. G- <laughs> yeah, P. <laughs> it's gay. funny. It's funny that you touch on on gay night there because I've got to um, want to give a shout out to all the all the Kiwi listeners uh, doing it a bit tough at the moment. They've had the uh, the earthquake. It has ripped through there at seven point eight on the Richter scale, from what I read. Mm. It's uh, it's a tough time again there as they look to rebuild from two thousand and ten with their big quake. So I hope everyone over there is all right and, and and coping at the minute. But there's an article that was written today. Yeah, it's uh, it's got here a uh, Destiny Church, which must be like the the uh, Baptist Church in in New Zealand. I think or something yeah, like a, a strand of that um, potentially. Uh, but their their leader, Bishop Brian Tamaki, is now blaming the earthquakes on gays, murderers, and sinners. Oh, so, yeah. Um, oh, you keep think, that bad juju to yourself. Yeah. yeah. You th- no, you th- thank you. Yeah, look, yeah pass. Mm. Pass. Like, you can't be thinking like that in this day and age. Like, who's coming out after a They're national event? They're dealing with that kind of situation, and then, and then they have to deal with this kind of mm. just sheer... Like, there's no, there's no like, human connection in, in these kind of people. They're just, like... They're just... Blo- they're just... They've just got this unrelatable, unrelatable rhetoric, and it's just, yeah... That time. Well, he, yeah. just, he also thinks that we're from Adam and Eve, you know, yeah. you've only been here for 2,000 years. <laughs> Imagine we also live yeah. on a flat earth. Like, yeah, yeah. there's yeah. no such thing as an earthquake yeah. on a flat earth, you lying cunt. Yeah. Yeah. Who is a, a flat earth theorist? Like, why? Oh, what, 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 what's their, what's their shtick? Like, well, I, don't, I don't, can't say I know. shouldn't have the word theorist. It's yeah. actually their name, I don't think. They I just don't believe any science Anything that's been written in the past, they mm. just don't uh, uh, going with our earth. They just don't believe it. Look on Instagram and you'll find like dome, dome finders and dome earthers. There's all these guys that just believe we're in like a, um, you know, bio snow, snow globes. Like we <laughs> yeah. just shake it and they fall. Like that's what they think we're in. You know, like <laughs> it almost could be. A bit. Well, that's, that's definitely what their minds are in. That sort of concept <laughs> seems. What show was that with Jim Carrey? Truman Show. Truman Show. We're in one big. We're on TV. Truman yeah, show. yeah. People are at home watching us. Oh man. Well, people are at home listening but already. Who, so who's we're the star, oh though? shit. Who's think, the star? Who's who? Are you the actors and I'm the star? Like, man. I think they're the real Truman's. <laughs> You're my support cast, man. Yeah. <laughs> Giddy. Oh man, and you know who I'm missing right now is is um, one of the regulars here, Stewie. Yeah. He, he's off and he's having a great time. Um, it looks it. Yeah, in um, South America. So, me, can you, you've um, you've committed to go on a Bali trip. Oh man, I have. It'll be loose. Yeah, I have, bro, and it's going to be uh, out of this world because some of the people, it's for my uh, uncle's um, wedding, and it's going to be we're staying in Seminyak. I've never been to Bali, and you know what? I wouldn't go to Bali. But Normal, now, normally, normally, and no, now you it's just... Not, it's in, not for me. I just, I'm not interested by it. You're getting caught up in a source fest. Yeah, and now <laughs> we're going over there and it's just for a wedding for four days in this, like, thing. We got 70% off this accommodation. So I'm only paying at this, like, five-star rest, uh, 
resort. I'm only paying like a hundred bucks a night, you know, yeah, in this private pool kind of stuff. So nice. yeah, I'm really excited. Mm. And it's going to be a really wild three days because my brother and I are the groomsmen. He's the best man. I'm the groomsman. So uh, for our uncle, it's going to be wild. Fuck yeah. And before, I, I, I just don't know what to expect. I think, I think because they're getting married where I'm staying, like I'm just wondering, like I don't have to venture out and I'm just not interested mm. by, that sort of, um, by that sort of culture. A lot of people venturing out in the States doing some gnarly shit right now. You've obviously kept up to date with the uh, election, Phil. Yeah, yeah. I um, just tried to keep pretty, uh, pretty balanced in, in uh, my thoughts on the whole I situation. Had, well said. I, fuck it. I'm exactly the same, man. I feel people just... You know, ape shit when just I think you just have to give it time. Take take an open mind to it, it's happened. Yeah, like there's judge, judge it in six to twelve months when we actually sort of see some shit starting to too, happen. Too like much that. white noise at the moment from mm. the usual perpetrators, like just, just yelling down there. Yeah. Their oh. self uh, given, you know, receptacle. Social media is just fucking uh, um, insane with it, isn't it? Yeah, it's just it's it's a bit not, it's a bit of a nightmarish situation, I think, that's unfolded in front of our eyes. And do, you, just... do you throw much sort of troll bait out there or anything? Or... <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely. yeah. I don't yeah. mind doing it at the odd time, man. It's it's very funny to see people make an, an example of themselves. And, uh, yeah, it's done. This this time around, it's just um, proven almost, like, too true to just, uh, you know, do, do, do your research, do a bit of study. Um, you know, think before you speak and stuff. Yeah, um, there's not much of that going. The on. one, uh, especially when like you can, where you're speaking at the moment is recorded for a very long time, and it can come up later. Later, um, and you know, it's just I just I just feel like you know when when we're we're talking on a platform that makes money off like fake news and stuff like that. If you've got a very good opinion, that that's probably going to get put right down the bottom, and then you're just wasting your time. You might as well. Mm, just know, go full age shit on it. Yeah, this yeah. um one of the things that set me off, like I didn't really throw too much out on social media about the stuff. Apart, I think I posted something online and I, I enjoyed it, like because I, I did. I followed it, man. I have yeah. no interest in politics out here. One bit, man. It just does nothing for me. Like the no. the personalities don't grab me almost. Like where, <laughs> well, we've been watching this in this, this yeah, every year. That's like, right. Going for a year and it's like no, he's not going to make it. He's yeah. not going to make it. It's oh, got look. He actually made it. It has the same <laughs> uh, matchmaking effect as sport, where they just hype yeah. it up. So that's where I get my mindset from with it. Where I was following him online, just and he he managed to uh, to get it done. But just the the people freaking out online. But the only thing I threw out, yeah, sorry, that, that's where I was going with that. The Instagram post I saw, this dude posts a photo of Lady Gaga on the night of the election holding a piece of paper in the street, um, standing on the door of a, uh, a semi-trailer that was parked there, mm-hmm. holding holding up a sign like, love Trump's fucking hate or like some, yeah. some sort of shit like that, love where, Trump's where she was a huge Hillary fan, like yeah. hates Trump. But that's and what this the- guy posted on there, this fucking guy goes, this right here, ladies and gentlemen, is what true bravery is like. Yeah, um, like, and, I'm, and I'm just uh, <laughs> this is like Lady Gaga. Gaga yeah. Lady Gaga went went out here, laid it all on the line. Like this is uh, what it, like the ma- most magical photo of the whole campaign and shit. And I just comment on there, going, "Sorry, like what what is so brave about holding a piece of paper in the street of what you guys call the land of the free?" I said, "For a country that's so into their veterans, like that is just a slap in the face to every single oh, one yeah. of them mm-hmm. that's gone over and lost their lives." Well, Lady Gaga can stay at home and make tens of millions of dollars and walks out in the street with a piece of paper and they're talking about bravery, like, 100%. get the fuck out of here. That's 100% true, um, Riz. That was, it's some blonde midget mm. holding up a sign. Yeah, and so he, he comments back to me going, look at you, white privilege, like, you don't have a clue what you're talking about and stuff. I'm like, ah, righto. block, I'm just leaving it. Yeah. Could be, he could be here all day otherwise. Some they, people they like that, eh? They wouldn't understand even if you gave them a really good argument in the first place. Like, their brain just doesn't work that way. Yeah. They only want the energy they're giving you in the first place. But but did, yeah. did you see uh, Hillary went down that same line of getting the A-list stars, you know? <laughs> We're going to get... They got, like, later South, like, South Park hit the nail on the head with that. Did they? Oh, Talking really? that um, mic, Will. Talking that mic, son. Yeah, so was right. um, yeah they, I, I think that they had, like, a little section there with Bill Clinton and Bill Cosby. Oh, oh. <laughs> I saw that, bro. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen that. Yeah, yeah it's just, bad, man. It's just, yeah, <laughs> look that up on YouTube, you'll have a good laugh. Right. 
Bill. Aren't they always Bill. on the money? Aren't they always on the money with that shit, man? Oh, mate, and they know, but that's it. Like they just they didn't get it. It won. For, it worked for Obama. Like he had like all the big names, and it was good for him. But like this haggard old white lady getting all those sort of peaks, yeah. mm. and, and, and they they just missed the mark. They were going. They were like appealing to the wrong type of people. We're not going to cop shit. that shit anymore. Well, Cray. Yeah. As I heard, like on on the radio, I think I think it was on Triple J, maybe. Um. They had, like the whole point kind of of Obama was to like popularize the president online kind of thing. Like up to that point, every um, major president in America hadn't really had to worry about the internet as much. No, it hadn't, no it hadn't Facebook evolved. Really. Yeah, like the most that like George Bush might have had a MySpace or something like mm. that. Is this what Kevin yeah. Rudd did? Didn't Kevin Rudd do that? He, yeah, he got the the millennial. Tr- Trump has come out and said that uh, Twitter played an integral Kevin part in Rudd his campaign. Kevin Rudd actually gave us that. You know, that nine hundred dollars. That was actually the the exact right amount to go out, to go out there and buy yourself a, like a laptop or a tablet or something. Really, like you reckon? <laughs> yeah, but play on the um the nine hundred. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Conspiracies up, <laughs> fucking Kevin Rudd. Where we know about you, <laughs> you. Yeah, you think we don't know, Kev? <laughs> I see that backdoor change. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. No, but um, that's they just got it wrong, and and I think a lot of the people now they think it, it happened by a coup, but no, sorry, it actually happened by an election. Mm. It, you're a democracy, and they sprint. They they're praising love Trump's hate, but. Hang on, the no, system is this, so, is this is fucked. Like now, I'm gonna go, um, like I don't know, like ride a little bit. The, is that the what system? Doing? The system is so different there, though, because am I right in saying that Hillary won the majority vote? So oh, Hillary got. I don't know. I, I, from what I've heard, and I don't know, people might be sitting at home just going, "What the fuck is he talking you about?" Are. I think Hillary might have got. Uh, more votes than Trump, but some states are weighed heavily. Yeah, yeah, that's, heavier. That's the way it worked oh, out. Really? She got yeah. like two hundred thousand more, I think, or something. Really? Like that. Yeah, but it's like there other. It was like he had like two hundred and seventy something states versus her two hundred yeah. wow. or eighteen. Yeah, how did that yeah. work? She got the majority vote, but didn't get all the states. Yeah, and that's time. that's also like a big thing in because um, the populations are bigger in like other states ha- and shit. Ha- yeah, so she ha- won Cali, which yeah. is forty million or whatever. Oh, so she got heaps mm. of people there. Like, I think they weighed it by, like, soci- socioeconomic areas and things oh, like that. I believe too. they That's do. Fucking bullshit, really. Mm. That's... Um, is little that little the, lowbrow East Mississippi, like, down in the fucking bayou or whatever it is. I don't know. Is that the electric... That, electric? They mightn't count as much as they you would in Calabasas. Yeah, right. How, does gotcha. that, how do they fucking... I don't, know, I don't know if that is true yeah, or not, the, but the that's fucked up is, if it is. Allegedly, that's fucked up. The whole thing is just, like, a big magnifying glass on... Just fix yourselves up. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. Well, you know it's up to him to fuck up now. Like it's up to him big time. And you know, I like honestly, I want to see him succeed. And um, I, I don't know, just to go, hey, fuck you. It's actually okay with me doing this. You know, like I want him to. I don't know. I just don't want him to fail because America doesn't need a fucking failed hmm. president. Well, That's I, right. I think too. Like it's uh, it's, it's a big opportunity for him to take a look back and think. Let's you know, kind of clean up our actors what we're doing, we're like, we're just, a, they, they, they've spent the past year and then like other elections as well, um, kind of, you know, championing rights that shouldn't be championed in like with politicians kind of thing. Like, you know, why aren't we looking at economic policies and like how to run a country, not like, you know, oh, I'm standing up for these people who are an isolated group and don't, um, give a shit about the country as an isolated group anyway and I'm also standing up for this minority too and then you get all those minorities together and you've actually got quite a big group yeah um, but I think it's and that's what's created a lot of the noise right now yeah. too yeah, yeah. oh yes yeah. and minorities that are, that are usually loud mouthed and vocal about what they do and their their attention's been diverted to politics all of a sudden and and yeah I just I totally agree man but give me your opinion on um Hillary being a robot. Oh, <laughs> mate, have you um have you seen like the, mechan- the, video. the mechanical yeah. things in her pants and stuff too? Like it, it's it full on looks like she's got a controller in her leg or something. It, Bill Bill is controlling her. Controller. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's actually Bill campaigning. <laughs> Bill and Bill. 
He, Bill, he, Bill Cosby. Bill Clinton, man. Whatever. Oh, man. Bill Cosby, though. Have you seen, wow. have you seen um, that overreaction video of her, actually? Um, and she, uh, I think a, a reporter walks up to her with a microphone, and she just... Just looks like she's yeah, having, having a seizure for like a good like 15, oh, 15 right. seconds or something, and then she it just starts really talking weird. like nothing happened. What? Yeah, Man, I've yeah. heard uh, heard on a podcast that she'd had problems with her health. It's like yeah, a short, well, short so it's because she's a, a robot. A robot. Yeah. It's too hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Her intercooler had broken down. <laughs> yeah, hello, hello. <laughs> I'm Hillary, and no wonder she lost because no, one, she was a robot. People yeah. saw through. people saw that. And people help me, people. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like it's just, you know, she's too unreliable, things like that. Like you, you couldn't really look at this woman and think like as some, like me, my age, people younger than me, like how could you look at her and think like, yeah, you're for me. Like, oh, exactly. You're, you're, she like, was you're not... not reading off a teleprompter right now. Yeah. Like your eyes are both looking at me and not like one over my shoulder. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, I don't know, but it's, it's going to be interesting <laughs> That's for sure. Gonna uh, well, she'll be she'll be there in the background. She'll be there, fucking hang around. Who, who, we'll, we'll, as I say, we'll see what transpires. But keep an open mind to it, folks. That'd probably be uh, like Uncle Bruce's advice. Thinking about introducing a new uh, segment, we're gonna give it give it a trial run. A lot of you ask sort of questions after listening to podcasts and shit like that. So we put out a little fucking fan questions. Section Shoot, today. This is going to be interesting. So, do we have any sickos? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there might be might be one little fucking curveball in there coming up, but any, we'll any, give you we'll give you drawings. Or? No, 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 uh, no, not a single dick pic either as oh, well. Man. Would you believe it? Like fucking letting us down. Like no uh, balls. We're yeah. looking for detail, people. Yeah, yeah. fucking ain't <laughs> no blood. It's, it's in the detail. I'm uh, first, first question off the top is from asked by uh, at Shearsy Snipers. The uh, what's your best multi bet for the UFC card this weekend? I've uh, I've got it up on the lappy. Having a quick peruse of the card, I'm going to uh, my money is on Masasi in the main oh, event. Yep. Take yep. Gegard Masasi. He's having a rematch against Uriah Hall, mm. and uh, I'm going to go with uh, Ross Pearson in the co main as well. He's yeah. up. He's up again. He's he's always active. Ross. This yep. fight's in Northern Ireland. They're going, okay, they're going yep. to Belfast. So. If I was to sell, sell you any two, just put those together in a little fucking two. I think you could probably get a little bit back there. Oh, man. that's I, I like that. Uh, chucking in. And if you do win, you know, you just throw it back. Um, back, you know, you, what we do for that's you, you it. do for us. Yeah, you know? that's it. Little, little knockoff. Yeah, yeah, drop us a line when you see something. <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, Elliot, when did you think, uh, when do you think Bisping versus Yoel Romero would happen? Because oh. that's obviously got to be the title shot. Yeah. See those two are, are, after the fight, yeah. having a little back and forth with each other on yeah. the screens and shit. Those, and the bird. those two got, got stuck into each other. I think that could happen. I'd like to see him turn around fairly quickly on that. Both guys aren't, aren't getting any younger, so let's let's make them active. Whether if Yoel can potentially take that belt from Bisping, which that's a fucking tough wow. night out for Bisping. It is a tough night. It, Just seeing what he did. Next, because um, why would they risk either of them getting hurt? Yeah, oh, yeah. It, it has it has oh, to be that next. Be next yeah. Maybe somewhere around Super Bowl weekend. I oh, think yeah. they could headline that card. They always do that as a big sort of long weekend in America. So yeah. I think if we could get those two together at Super Bowl weekend, five, five round title fight, Bisping's best chance in that is to get the fight deep into oh, the latter see, rounds because yeah. Bisping's volume yeah he's got he'll Who, come at you all day whose output's better than Bisping in, a, in five it's rounds he's, he's up there so look he's just got to stay away from the power shot to Yoel like he can just explode he's unpredictable he can explode at any time when he's on you I did, no one saw that flying knee coming on the on Saturday night <laughs> in, including that? Chris Whiteman oh yeah fuck me man so yeah, yeah I'd, I'd say so Super Bowl man. weekend for that it's a fucking tough night out for Bisping but who's uh, who's fucking been better than, form than him like uh, Paddy, did you ever do any dumb shit as a kid that you look back now and cringe hard over? Oh man, um, I don't know. What about you, Richie? My memory is not stretching back that far right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, can't think of one off the top of your head. Oh, it's definitely shaped who I am right now. I look back to like the <laughs> stupid. Um, I remember being in a house at uh, at Redcliffe oh, in, yep. growing up in uh, high school. Maybe maybe about fourteen years old. Yep. Go. 
into a ha- into the house. There's a bunch, a couple of empty wine bottles there. And a few of us got cups and coffee mugs out of the kitchen. Yep. Just walked down to the end of the street and just lobbed all of this stuff oh, in, into like yeah. the na- neighbourhood of houses, just randomly. <laughs> just so stupid yeah. and young, and no, not even thinking. Imagine just if we were sitting in the studio here now, and we just hear like 10, <laughs> 10 bottles smash out the front. It would uh, elevate the heart rate if you sit oh. inside the house. Yeah, I, that's something. Yeah, like that's a, that sort of shit. You look back and be like, "Oh fuck!" Like hitting golf balls at trains, mm. things, things like that, where it's just you don't not thinking the ramifications oh. or the consequences at that age. Like, well, well, then you are, and or oh, not really pissing in your mate's um, bedroom from the outside. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so that's a, that's another one. Yeah, I'm not happy about, but I am kind yeah. of like that shaped a lot of our friendships. Yeah. <laughs> we went to, over to a, a friend's place growing up, and. Uh, Sitting around throwing uh, textbooks into his ceiling fan, like at his parents' <laughs> place. You know what I mean? Just two, just a nice family in like living, Lovely yeah, li- living in the similar sort of neighbourhood to us, and we're just going over and just throwing shit into the fan, being fucking little pricks like that sort of stuff. Now I, I, I cringe at for sure. Yeah, and anything where I damage someone else's property, that I'm, I'm not, ha- I'm not proud of that. <laughs> oh, Ben's yeah. yeah. Do you want to get? Do you want to get any deeper there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I am proud of, though. I am proud of this one time that I was walking past an ex's of mine's ex, and he was he was just being annoying on the scene. So what I did, I just went and allegedly um, just drained his tyres. <laughs> 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 just, um, out of his vehicle yeah of his vehicle I drained those <laughs> tires man so this dude on a Sunday is probably going into his uh, get that avocado yeah. smashed out <laughs> and he's he's rolling on there, yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> sparks everywhere <laughs> is that refreshing your mind at all Phil any fucking silly shit uh, yeah you know there's one where um, I was at a pool party and uh, we decided you know let's um, let's just jump the neighbour's fence and whoever can make a best a better outfit out of other people's washing wins. Mm. So that was that was pretty terrible. But I did get a nice shirt out of it. Was so, that just your next door neighbour? Oh, like, it, it sprawled for like half half the postcode. I was going to say, man, oh. because it, <laughs> is that stealing stuff off people's clothes? Yeah. Oh man, yeah. get called a real dirty fucking yeah. prick for doing that. I like, would be so <laughs> filthy if any of my shit got yeah. stolen off the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah miss those panties cool. and stuff. Oh. Like fuck, man, there's a sicko here. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. all mine. Yeah, start using the dryer. The the no, line, yeah. the crotch is eating out of oh, my. Oh, I was actually just playing on my own too. So like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, just trying to set personal best each night. Sort of thing. That was the. You went a suit one yeah. night. You went a nice little <laughs> dress. Oh, a little number. I got like I got like a little scrapbook, and I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my oh, god, man. dude! Fuck it, last one. I ask, reach back too far with that one. Uh, last one asked by uh, Mike East. Uh, have you ever slept with a coworker? And uh, any advice on how to approach the topic? Oh, avoid. <laughs> avoid. Um, you reckon? <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Uh, oh no! Oh man! I it's guess, just such a slippery slope. Yeah, man. I've I've done it, um, and it has, it's made things very awkward in very awkward situations. Mm. And um, would I do it again? No. Um, but if it's your first time, do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And then, and then <laughs> you'll find out that it's not worth it. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. You got to yeah, you have to give it a go. If those, if those urges are there, sometimes you do have to just cave into that and that. Fucking but does you happen. know what, man? Like my my brother uh, got with his um, work miss, so and now they're married, have to keep have kids. It, it can. It, that's yep. proof there that it can work absolutely. But there's times where I, I did it as a young a younger bloke and got into a, a relationship out of it and had a, had a fun time in this relationship. Mm. Did a lot of cool shit and stuff. But you should probably just, have a, an exit plan first. That's right. Yeah. We were like split up, separate ways. Young, silly, mm. ended up, um, but. but as when we split, you had another job. So we'd met, met in the workplace yeah, and work, and that definitely made it easier where yeah. I think if you're going to try and move forward with it and you're going to both stay in the same job, that could get gnarly as far. I also think it depends on the job as well. What about like people in the military, you mm. know, like but is it an office job? Are you in each other's pocket? Yeah. Because if that's the case, no, man. <laughs> you, know, you don't want that. <laughs> I had a situation once, man, where I was in a, um, in a bar in Brisbane at like 18, like, Fucking first job out of school at this at this tiny little firm, like fucking 
working computer job and shit. Ended up um, one of these one of these chicks there, man, was just fucking so obviously into me, man. Like, oh, so, yep. so obviously it, email old, each other all day. Well, I'm 18. She's probably 22, 23. Gotcha. Probably something After like that. the young bull. Start fucking, yeah, Grabbing yeah. the bull by the horns. Yeah, yeah. Coming for a fucking, coming to pony up. <laughs> Ended up going, um, emailing back all day and stuff. Rah, rah. Didn't, um, didn't end up doing anything with her. However, she had this housemate that came for afternoon drinks one day. Oh. <laughs> and this girl had obviously been going home and talking to her housemate who was fucking oh. an absolute space cadet. Man. Yeah. Like, Crazy, crazy chick, fucking all all over the place. Walks up, so there, she's obviously going home and, and talking about me. Oh, so she so comes up to me. She's like, "Hey, are you are you such and such?" Oh. I was like, "Yeah." And young, like eighteen year old me, I'm like, "Yeah." yeah I was like, awesome. who, "I was like, who the hell are you?" She's just like, "Oh, I'm fucking Brittany." Yeah, like, and I was like, "Oh, okay." She's like, "Yeah, yeah, I've fucking heard a lot about you." Blah blah blah. Go to the bar, have a drink. So should we just get out of here? Like she says this to me, oh, I was like, yeah. "Oh, uh, oh what?" Like, meanwhile, the girl that I work with is like looking at eyes over the bar and shit, oh, like seeing yeah. what's happening, and Awkward. she's just like torn, man, like torn, and goes, uh, "We end up getting out of there, walk over to uh, have intercourse in a public toilet, yeah, <laughs> like, oh, yeah. <laughs> near, nearby the uh, train station, the, yeah, the facility, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and we like near the venue, and uh, did that." Fucking both ended up just parted ways and going home after that. And that walking in that Monday morning and seeing her after she would have known what exactly what oh, had yeah. happened was uh, fucking not no, something no, that no. you wanted want to do again. And what we're working she... in a confined space and shit, and it never it never really got brought up. There what was she thinking? That, uh, there wasn't. Yeah, br- bringing that along, yeah. like yeah, come along. And this other bloke, um, like yeah, it turns out that this chick was just straight freak man and. Uh, Happy days. Had, had known me for not very long and asking me to hit and do that sort of oh, shit. 30 so, minutes? How do you reckon? 30 minutes, 40 it, minutes? Tops. Wow. Tops. Sugar cane champagne. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't know what I was drinking back then, but whatever it was, there was something in the water that night. Like, Bundy Reds. Oh, no. That was even before that. Oh, really? This was like fucking fresh out of high school, man. Fresh yeah. out of high school. So if you that's my, that's my take on it. You proceed with caution. Otherwise, you're going to get in some awkward situations and you've yeah. got to be sure and you've got to make make sure that that fucking one night out or that one hookup is going to be worth the fucking hours, days, weeks, months, potentially years of fucking awkward shit around one person in a in a confined environment that you've got no choice to go to because yeah. you're just a fucking economic prisoner. Especially if you have a little, <laughs> especially if you have a little dick because if you have a little dick and, oh, you, yeah. and you fail... Oh, You've got to live with that shit. Exactly, and you man. Know she's going to tell her friends. Needs to be a uh, yeah. performance of the night bonus. Yeah. Performance with, if, with a work colleague. It yeah. ha- you have to slay, which yeah, doesn't help it. Because chances are, if you're doing that in work situations, there's alcohol involved. Yeah, you're going to For be, sure. Yeah. There's sauce involved somewhere if you're looking at Everyone's feeling a bit happy. Exactly. So, yeah. oh, fucking man. tread lightly, bitches. <laughs> Last thing I, uh, I, I want to touch on, another listener of ours is... Good bloke doing good things. Uh, firefighter up in Mount Isa. He's doing a fundraiser for Movember. Oh, know awesome. Phil sitting next to me here has got an absolutely ridiculous fucking moustache <laughs> at the moment. So <laughs> Phil would do well. Are you on Movember? <laughs> no, I'm not actually. You should, man. Creating it. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> fucking, well, you got the, got the effect out of us. But this is a, yeah, good fellow doing good things. His account, if you want to follow him, uh, and donate some money. He's mobro.co slash get rowdy. G E T R O Y D Y. Awesome. Donate to his account. It's meant Movember is a huge thing for men's health. We've got a predominantly male audience. And it's really important. Uh, Movember has uh, in uh, raised so much money, so much well, like really needed money. Mm. And they've helped out families and men <coughs> um, for. A long a while now, fifteen years. Do you know the length? How long it's been? I'm going not, not not really even sure, but this fellow Paddy, he's done his mo for the last couple of years. Always gets behind it. Works in sort of environments where people will get behind him too. So yeah, he's looking to raise some money. Mo, what sort of mo, mo does he have? I think he's just going to rock the uh, either a handlebar or the push broom. It's still pretty early oh, days because he do, he does the right thing and shaves fucking beforehand yeah, and stuff. Yeah, so good. it's a freshy. So if you want to donate, get behind him. Raising money for good shit too, not only just men's health, like the, the cancers and the diseases, but also sort of this mental health things and suicide prevention and things like that. So 
yeah, you know, if you know any blokes growing a mo, get behind them. We might wrap this bitch up. It's a little sneaky midweeky for us. So glad we touched on two hundred five. Phil, thanks for coming on, man. It's been an epic, uh, thanks, epic man. to have you on. Hopefully, thanks, hopefully the sound quality will be fucking a one and back to uh, the usual quality. Don't think we done fucked up this time. <laughs> Chris, uh, Chris will be back next Wednesday. We're going to talk uh, New Zealand fishing trip that he's got planned. Oh, we'll touch yes. on uh, the UFC from the weekend. Might even do some more fan questions again too. So thanks for tuning in. We'll fucking talk to you next week. Peace. See ya. Bye.